Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 1997 Ford F-150 that's been having some battery problems. The owner said that a little while ago we put on a new alternator, new battery, and now it's dead again. He said he had some problems with the four-wheel drive. The lights were flickering on the dash, so definitely something electrical. So we got 10 volts here on the battery, it's disconnected. Let's uh, pop it on. Eight point two volts. Yeah, that's not going to start the truck. Let's get a jump pack on here. Here's the alternator, and start it up. See if it charges. All right, so we got the Adu jump pack on here. Let's push the button. 15 volts. This thing should crank right up. So I'm suspecting a charging system issue here. And where are the keys? Oh, here they are. doesn't seem to be working. Hazards don't seem to be working. Oh man, it sounds like a looks like a bad ground or something. Let's see are the lights working. Headlights are on. Horn works. So I don't like this. No turn signals. You can see indicators are dimly lit so there's definitely a back feed problem going on and when you turn the high beams on that light goes out so we're looking for a bad ground uh, gotta look up some diagrams and see what grounds like you know start with something that we know doesn't work like the turn signals how about that by the way, we want to check all the other accessories. So the wipers work, windows work, locks work, mirrors work. So we got a problem with our dash. Okay, so we're lighting. See four wheel drive? That doesn't seem to work and our fan does not work. So let's keep that in mind. Alright, so here's the uh, logical approach thought process. So I pulled up a whole bunch of windows with the uh, wiring diagrams. So for example, headlights, the grounds are at G104 and G103. 
Okay, keep that in mind. Turn signals. The indicator lights in the instrument cluster are grounded at G200. And the actual turn signals themselves are at G103, G104. Okay. Heating and air conditioning. The blower relay is grounded through G200. And so is the, um, the resistor. There's G200 again. So I'm seeing... G200 is the most likely cause of all these problems here. So let's take a look at G200 ground distribution. So blower motor resistor, function selection switch from S201 to A. So all this stuff, four wheel drive mode switch, he said that didn't work. Instrument cluster flasher relay, that would explain no turn signals, and then B and C, there are a whole bunch of stuff, the radio, I couldn't turn that off, instrument cluster, ignition switch, left door ajar, so a lot of stuff on G200, so that's what, where I want to go first. G200 is lower right cowl panel inner. So I'm assuming that's by the right kick panel. Let's go there and do a visual inspection on this thing. Da -da -da -da. Yep, that's it right there. That's G200. So let's undo that, see if the eyelet's still alive. We can connect it up here a little higher higher than the rust. <laughs> you can see the ground through the hole. That, uh, that pretty much explains a lot of stuff. Now the parasitic draw. Let me shut the truck off. So without that ground... You can hear stuff. Let's, um... 14 amps. Massive. That is a huge parasitic draw. No wonder this truck is going dead. What we could do, simple bypass test. Connect a wire here bypass that ground and see if that parasitic draw goes away. <laughs> well, I tried unscrewing the bolt. That didn't quite work out. So let's uh, try to get this crusty crap off of here and just attach it to this bolt right here. If we can get this off, we'll be in good shape. So I don't think we can save this eyelet. It's all green and crusty anyway, so Let's cut that off. Strip this wire back. Get some clean, more or less clean copper there. And we'll just crimp on a new Ground lug on here. Perfect. And reattach it and see what happens. Alrighty, 
easy enough. Let's just measure our draw at the moment. And we got three, three amps there, so don't really know if it's 100% fixed yet, but let's start it up and see what happens, see if our stuff comes back to life. Yay, our blower works. Let's see if our AC works. Turn signals. Excellent. We can turn our radio off now, I think. Maybe you still can't turn it off. Might be a separate issue, four-wheel drive. High beam indicator works, turn signals work, promising. Let's see, four wheel drive. Yep, I heard it engage. We got the four wheel drive light. Four low, low range, sweet. Back to high. So AC is blowing warm. Okay, so we're not quite done with this truck, but it's a big improvement. Let's shut it down. Close the doors and see if this thing will go to sleep. Now we're down to a quarter of an amp. So we'll just let it sit here and go to sleep, see what happens. bonus footage on the air conditioning. Why is the compressor not kicking on? Well, here's the diagram. If our selector is in AC and the fan is on, then the voltage goes through AC pressure cutoff switch, AC cycling switch, right to the compressor clutch. It also goes to the PCM to tell it to, you know, bump up the RPMs. Here's the high pressure switch. I unplugged it and plug it back in. Here the RPMs increase, but the clutch is not kicking on. So that tells me this is all good. BCM is receiving a signal, but the compressor clutch solenoid is not kicking on. So we need to get there, unplug it, put a test light in it, and see if that lights up. Okay, so I have a test light installed. Basically unplug the AC compressor clutch and here we have test light. So whenever the AC clutch is commanded on, that test light should light up. Let's see what happens. By the way, our parasitic draw right now is less than a 0.2 amps. So we could do an in-series check, but that's, I guess for this thing, it's not too bad. All right, AC's on, blower's on. Test light is on. And off. Test light's off. That tells me wiring integrity all the way to the compressor clutch and that ground is perfect. So if the compressor's not kicking on, needs a new compressor. Or at least a new clutch. You could check the resistance.
of the clutch itself. And if that's, you know, if it's open, then definitely needs a new clutch. Well, that's interesting. We got 3.9 ohms on the clutch itself. So what we could do is just feed it straight up power through a fuse and run the truck, see if the compressor kicks on. All right, here we go. So power and ground. I didn't hear any clicks. I can still turn the thing by hand. And just in case you're wondering, the amperage is three amps. So the coil's fine, but the clutch itself is shot. So last thing I want to do is hook up an in-series ammeter and measure that parasitic draw after letting the truck sit for a while. All right, so in-series ammeter connected, 173 milliamps. Let the truck sit, see what happens. But if there is a parasitic draw, it's going to be a separate diagnostic chart. So we found a bad ground that explained a lot of the symptoms, the big draw, no turn signals, no blower motor, all that stuff. Second diagnosis was no air conditioning, compressor engagement, bad clutch. Third diagnosis is this parasitic draw, you know, what's left over. So keep in mind, if you're doing this, you know, <laughs> as a job, then you have to be very straightforward with the client and break up, you know, the jobs into separate issues if they're all not related. Very key, because you don't want to say, oh, it's one hour charge, and then he expects you to fix everything that's wrong with the truck, which obviously has several issues. Uh, so the customer okayed the parasitic draw testing. So we're chasing this 170 milliamp draw. And first things first, let's go to the power distribution box and do a really quick voltage measurement, voltage drop measurement on each of the fuses. And hopefully you can see the screen right there. So if you go across each fuse, you should see 0.0, .0 millivolts, absolutely no current. Now, I went through the whole fuse box and the only fuse that gave me any voltage drop at all was this fuse right here. It says 0 0.2 millivolts. Now, you don't think that's a lot, but it's a 50 amp fuse. So, quick thing to do here is just pull it out. And look at our draw. Okay, perfect. We're down to 10 milliamps. That's fine. So now we have to see where this 50 amp fuse, what that feeds. It's fuse number 22, maxi fuse. So let's pop it back in. And you see something woke up, now it's 0.3, so 350 milliamps. Uh, let's see what that fuse feeds. All right, so here's the power distribution diagram. There's fuse 22, 50 amp, and that goes to A, junction box fuse and relay panel. Okay. Junction box fuse relay panel, and that can feed anything. So we need to find this box and do the same voltage drop measurements on on these fuses here. and see what we get. All right, so here's the fuse panel under the dash, and we want to make sure that the door is closed, so all the dome lights are off. Uh, I think the switch is in this latch. Yep, so lights turned off. Truck thinks the door is closed, key is out. We wanna make sure our parasitic draw is, uh, yep, here it is, 170 milliamps, so we're ready to check the fuses in this box. Okay, so I went ahead and checked all the fuses in this box, and there are two that have a non-zero reading. So in the second row, third fuse, that's a 15 amp. Turn it 
two hands is always better than one. So this 15 amp fuse right here has zero 0.3 millivolts and then the one below it, 5 amp, 0 0.9 millivolts. Interesting. Those are fuses number 14 and 15. So I have those written down. Let's see where those go. Okay, so fuse 14, 15 amp, goes to our battery saver relay, interior lamp relay, and fuse 15, 5 amp, goes to our generic electronic module. So let's pull the 5 amp fuse and, you know, that has the bigger voltage drop on it. See what happens. Okay, see what happened on our amp meter. About 15 milliamps. Okay, that's fine. Let's pop that 5 amp fuse back in. We're back up to our 350 milliamp reading. Try taking out the 15 amp fuse. So our interior lamps should not come on. No, they don't. So if we close the door. Down to 60, 70 milliamps. That's interesting. So all fuses are in. We have our 170 milliamp draw. So we're dealing with this battery saver and gem module issue. And Here's our fuse 15, 5 amp, power distribution hot at all times. That just powers up the generic electronic module. Now fuse 14 is right here, and that feeds the battery saver relay and interior lamp relay. Right, and we're worried about the battery saver. So let's pull, the, pull out the battery saver relay and it's located right here, it's the second relay down to this one and let's we'll see if it clicks it is clicking so it is energized and if we pull it our draw goes down to 70 milliamps So why is that GEM not going to sleep? That's my question. Back up to 70. Let's reinstall our interior lights. Still at 70. And our battery saver So if that's in, down to 170 milliamps, that battery saver relay is still energized. Now if we pull the 5 amp fuse with the relay in place, you can hear the relay de-energize. We're down to 16 milliamps. So the problem is the GM is keeping the battery saver relay energized. It's not going to sleep. What does it need to go to sleep? Hope this diagnosis isn't putting you to sleep. Well, going on some forums, we might be chasing a ghost. This battery saver relay kicks off after 30 to 45 minutes. So, we might have to just leave this truck with the ammeter on it, come back, and 
check the dry, and if it's not there, then we're good to go. So, um, in this case, I wouldn't charge for a diagnosis if the problem isn't there. So, thanks a lot for research, goes a long way. I assume this 97 truck would just go to sleep in like under two minutes. Not the case. Let's read GM, GM sleep mode. So, GM CTM sleep mode deactivates all outputs to conserve battery power. Sleep mode is entered when the ignition has not entered runner accessory position in 45 minutes has elapsed, elapsed since the wake up input was received. 45 minutes! In this mode, GM current consumption is reduced to 5 milliamps or less. Okay, so let's see what time it is. It is 3.46, so we can be back here in about an hour. Check the draw. And hopefully this thing will go to sleep. All right, quick follow-up check. It's an hour later on the F-150. Meters connected. We got 20 milliamps. Beautiful, awesome. This truck's ready to turn to the customer. Just has bad AC clutch. And those are available aftermarket, so you don't need to replace the whole compressor. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the weather. And see you next time. Bye-bye.